Taken objectively, the last Porsche 911 Turbo was all the sports car you'd ever need. Its jet speed and sure-footed handling combined with all the boring but true facts about being reliable and easy to live with make it nigh on perfect. But cars aren't the most rational of purchases, supercars much less so, and thus such completeness can come across as a little straight-laced. In short, the 991 Generation 911 Turbo was sensationally talented, but lacking in fun compared to even base Carreras, never mind the GT2 and GT3. You could argue it's the natural byproduct of lobbing indecent amounts of power at a car with all-wheel drive and multiple driving aids. Age-old things like driver involvement sometimes take a little bit of a backseat. Given the wild reputation of the original 911 Turbo, the whale-tailed 930 of the mid-70s, it felt like there was ground to make up. Without skipping to the end too much, the 992 Turbo, launched in 2020, has filled that gap. But it's done so while piling on even more power, squeezing in additional driver assistance tech and, somewhat unfashionably, gaining weight in the process. The end result is a base 911 turbo offering a 572 brake horsepower peak for a smidge under £135,000 while the Halo Turbo S is a 642 brake horsepower, £156,000 car. For context, the outgoing Turbo S was a 572 brake horsepower car. Things have really stepped up a notch here. To the point the 992 Gen Turbo S offers a 205 miles per hour speed, while both rungs of the turbo ladder offer a 0 to 62 miles per hour time comfortable below 3 seconds. No manual, of course, and it remains all-wheel drive with the same 8-speed PDK ratios as in the 992 Carrera. The key change is the final drive ratio has been lengthened to allow the Turbo S to crest 200 miles per hour and beyond. There's an electronically controlled difference at the back and a hydraulic one in the center of the car. Rear wheel steering is standard as is Porsche's two-mode active suspension management. And, as is the Vogue these days, the front and rear wheels are of different sizes. Instead of 20s all round like last time, this car gets 20s at the front and 21s at the back. The aero package has also evolved with the changes to the wider, longer car. The adjustable front splitter and wider rear wing, both of which automatically go to max attack in Sport Plus mode, but can be set independently, add a claimed 100 kg of downforce at the Turbo SS claimed 205 miles per hour top speed. Doesn't sound like that much, but it's a good balance of added stability without shredding fuel economy. Differences between the Turbo and Turbo S are vanishingly small, and all the absolutely essential tech is standard on both. The 22,000 grand pound premium of the latter essentially gets you even more adjustable sport seats plus standard carbon ceramic brakes and PASM active anti-roll bars, plus 70 brake horsepower, 7 miles per hour and 0.1 seconds advantages in the big three top trump stats. If you want to spend yet more money, both are available as cabriolets for an additional 9 grand or so. The last 911 Turbo S really stretched the abilities of the 991 platform, to the point where you couldn't reasonably see how Porsche could have significantly improved it. This 992 base Turbo and Turbo S prove there was plenty more left in the tank. This is a car which is quicker, grippier and more capable than ever, but also more sumptuously involving than it's perhaps been since the mid-90s. It's the most interesting 911 Turbo in several generations. So much so, it's our favorite performance car of 2022. It's important to remember where the 911 Turbo sits in the Porsche range. This is absolutely not meant to be the ultimate expression of Porsche performance. Those are the GT cars built by the Motorsport division, the delectable GT3 S and the mighty twin-turbo GT2 RS. The Turbo S is designed to be the ultimate road-devouring exec express. Comfort and ease of use are on a par with performance and handling here. And judged on that basis, this new car appears to have hit the very center of the bullseye. Getting going, setting the seat and wheel, pairing your phone etc. is fuss-free. Much easier and simpler. Which is how the whole car feels as you pull away. Solid, sorted, unflappable. There's none of the usual 911 business to the controls, the suspension is quiet and there's a general sense of calm in the cabin. 
with the electronically assisted steering damping out most of the road imperfections and the engine muted out back, it is deceptively, wickedly fast. Just easing onto a motorway, you can look around to change lanes and look down at the speedo to see you've effortlessly crested, well, never mind. Where you'd normally know thanks to the engine and road noise, in the new turbo, you just don't. This makes it an exceptionally easy and comfortable GT car in which to unfurl hundreds and hundreds of miles, we did 700 in a day without any complaints. But it doesn't explain anything about the other side of its character. This is equally impressive in an entirely different way. You have to dial in Sport or preferably Sport Plus mode to really wake it up. But when you do, every sinew in the car tightens up nicely. It feels like the wheelbase shrinks a couple of inches, 250 kilograms gets jettisoned and the turbos go from meat to wild. But in reality the splitter and wing extends and the gearbox hangs on to ratios longer. Either way, the effect is electrifying, the car drawing from apparently bottomless wells of grip and power. This isn't just a bit faster over the road than the outgoing model, it's way faster than the raw numbers would suggest, and far more composed, too. Too composed. Well, Porsche has had the good sense to dial in more fun than before, too.